Hi right, everyone. Um, thought I'd make a video um, about what we've been talking about and uh, give you a slideshow on it. So I'm gonna start in the front here. I'll show uh, some pictures, but um, when we do test on these things, uh, we'll have kind of a unique test. We'll actually have a more of a picture test. So anything on this slideshow that I talk about, animal-wise, um, will be testable. So make sure that um, I'll show a few. But make sure if you don't know what something looks like that you're looking it up. Uh, I think uh, for a lot of you this this part of the test can be really easy, um, especially if you're an outdoors type person. Uh, you're going to know all the animals and what they look like. If you are not, it may be more difficult. So it may be something you have to put, uh, put time into. So um, without further ado, let's get started. So North Dakota animals. Um, first we're going to start out, well, largely we're going to cover um, game animals. Um, there's many, many types of non-game animals in North Dakota that I'm not going to cover. I actually had in the past, uh, but uh, I think it'd make for too long a video. So I thought, let's just cover the game species in North Dakota this year, not the non-game. So, um, <coughs> uh, ducks. Uh, North Dakota has many types of ducks. Um, we are in what's called the central flyaway and because we're in the central flyaway it means we get a lot of game birds we get a lot of migratory birds through north dakota um we're on the eastern edge of the central part of the central flyaway so we're we're actually almost in the middle um probably what we see most is mallards or greenheads or um, many uh, just ducks. I mean, uh, they're the number one hunted waterfowl species in the Midwest and the number one in North Dakota. Um, that probably has changed. It's a statistic I looked up and it said like from 2012. It might have changed, um, especially because um, Canadian geese. We now have um, we now have an early season. And it used to just be resident people, people that lived here that could hunt them. And now it's expanded to everybody can hunt them. If you don't live here, um, you can buy a license, come to North Dakota and hunt them. Um, I think as early as mid-August. I think uh, the season last year started around August 15th. Uh, anyway, back to uh, mallards. It's number one hunted waterfowl species in the Midwest. Typically the season starts uh, late, no, late September, early October. Um, you have various limits for different ducks. Um, they've they've switched it a lot. Um, I think now I did not look this up, and uh, I didn't go waterfall hunting much this year. Uh, I think it's five uh, five total ducks you can have. Well, six total ducks you can have, and five mallards. So um, it's it's a species that has one of the higher limits also. Um, other ducks around, you'll see a lot of pintails, real cool looking ducks, widgeons, uh, wood ducks, and teal. I'm going to quick look up a pintail for you. I'm sure you know what a mallard looks like, but if we look up pintail and we look for images, I guess there's an image right there. This is a pintail. Um, they're pretty easily identified. They whistle. Um, if, you've, uh, if you're st strictly hunting pintails, uh, coach's whistle works real well. Um, but this right here um, is what a male pintail looks like. In most duck species, if not all, all that I know of anyway, um, the male is the, the more brightly colored um, of the two ducks. The female is usually more, more uh, browns and drab. So we go back to our slideshow. We go back to our slideshow. Um, Widgeons, wood ducks, and teal. You'll have to look those up. Uh, geese, uh, Canadian geese, uh, Canadian goose, number one um, hunted species um, out of the geese. Uh, around here, though, we, it's very unique. Uh, Oaks is a big destination. Whoop, big destination for spring snow geese. Um, Spring snow geese, uh, like I said, uh, you'll see uh, you'll see you'll probably within the next two weeks, maybe three weeks, you'll see a lot of hunters and a lot of snow geese migrating through oaks. Um, all you got to do is listen outside at any point in the day, and you'll hear them. They sound like Canadian geese, except for they're a little more high pitched, a little more high pitched sound. 
Um, other geese that you'll see, especially with snow geese, you have blues, and blues and snows are the same goose. It's what it's called as a color phase. So snows and blues have different color phases, meaning they're they're just um, they're born with um, like much like people, um, where you have different. Uh, colored people, you have different colored geese. Um, you also have Ross's goose, and that's one I'm going to look up. It is not very common in North Dakota, but it's very similar looking. Let's see if we can find it. Um, very similar looking to a snow goose. Um, you probably could not tell the difference. So here's a Ross's goose. Typically, they're a little smaller. That's about it, and snow geese are small anyway. Um, and then you have a speckle belly, which I'll show you a picture of too. Oop. Speckle bellies are, a, you know, a prize. Um, I personally, I've seen a lot of them. Um, I think I've hunted and shot one. Um, real cool looking uh, geese. You very, they're not rare. But they're not common either. They're they're uh, they're not as common as a Canadian goose or uh, 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 snow goose. So they're pretty cool looking. Um, prize for any hunter. Next, <coughs> pheasants. Uh, number one bird hunted in North Dakota. What's real unique about pheasants is a pheasant is not native to North Dakota. They were actually introduced in the early 1900s from China. So if you go over to China, they have all kinds of different kind of pheasants. They, we have one species. We have the ringneck. Um, there's several other species, probably more than that, um, species in China. And a lot of the times they're growing up, they're growing on farms, much like peacocks. Um, they're kind of just colorful in display. And, and they're not huntable wild birds over there. In North Dakota, it's the number one hunted bird by far. I'm sure a lot of you even that hunt, that's probably your main quarry is pheasants. Um, I'm not going to show a picture of a pheasant. If you don't know what it looks like, you should probably look that up. Other, other uh, upland game birds, you have uh, grouse, um, you have rough sage, sharp tail, and sharp tail are probably the most common. Sage are very uncommon, um, and roughed are very uncommon, um, especially you would not see a rough grouse around here. They live in wooded areas. The only place you really see rough grouse is in northeast North Dakota. Unique story, I um, went with Mr. Sager probably five, six, seven years ago to hunt um, deer up by his hometown of Cavalier, and we were walking through just a, a piece of brush, and I actually saw a rough grouse. Only time I've ever seen one. Um, they're not... They're not anything special to look at, but they're pretty cool because they're like sitting in trees. So um, you don't see a lot of upland game birds in trees. Sage grouse are huge. I'm going to show a picture of a sage grouse. If you've been out to the prairie pothole um, where Mr. Shaw lives, they actually have a sage mounted sage grouse. And they're, they're big, they're huge, and they're real cool looking. So here's what a sage grouse looks like. Um, you, found, you find them on the prairie. I'm not sure. Um, we haven't had a season on them. Um, for many years, uh, probably close to 10. I'm not sure if there's one this year. And I'm not 100% sure it's been 10 years, but um, on and off, it's been 10 years. So um, anyway, uh, they're found mainly in central and western North Dakota. Uh, they are, they're, the only grouse that isn't is the rough grouse. He's, uh, they're found more in northeast North Dakota, northern Minnesota. Uh, the, but the sharp tail and the sage grouse are more mainly found in central and western. Uh, sage grouse are found in the uh, low grass areas in western. Sharp tail, you will see sharp tail around here. Um, if you've ever seen, um, if you ever kick something that looks like a hen pheasant up and it beats its wings really, really fast and then kind of sails, that's a sharp tail. They look different than pheasants. Pheasants uh, tend to constantly beat their wings when they're flying. Sharp tail kind of sail. Um, you'll find sharp tail in, in mainly pastures. Uh, so if you know, you're in the high plains area out by, say, Linton um, or Wishick, uh, you walk past your land. Um, it's, and then usually you find them around sagebrush. And uh, consequently, I've hunted a lot of sharp tail grouse. Uh, they kind of taste like what they eat. They kind of taste like sage, sagebrush. So they're not my favorite quarry to eat. Um, the next upland game bird is the morning dove. Uh, it's the smallest of all North Dakota game birds. Uh, it's um, 
the earliest season of all North Dakota game birds. Um, you'll see doves all around, um, usually sitting on highline wires. Yes, it is illegal to shoot a dove off a highline wire. Um, you'll also see a different dove, which is illegal to shoot. It's called a European, I think it's a European ringneck dove. And I'm going to look that up, even though um, we don't uh, have that as part of our notes. So right here, this is a ringneck dove. This is different than a shark, or than a uh, morning dove. Morning doves don't have the ring. Uh, these doves are typically bigger. I had not seen one in North Dakota until probably five, six, seven years ago. It was um, something that's came around to me. It's came around our area, you know, lately. So uh, I, maybe you guys uh, know different, but it's typically it's bigger than a morning dove. Um, they're hard to identify though, um, but one is illegal to shoot and one is not. Uh, number three, partridge. Uh, numbers have drastically reduced since the 1990s, um, largely due to cover and habitat. Um, you will see a few partridge around. They usually fly in coveys. They are very small. Um, almost like a quail, if you know what a quail is. Uh, but they are, um, if you know where some partridge are, there are still seasons on partridge, and they're um, kind of a cool little bird to hunt. Big game. Uh, I think everybody knows what a whitetail looks like. Uh, one thing on your test, you might have to identify the difference between a whitetail and a mule deer. Several differences. Um, if you look at a mule deer, um, especially a buck, uh, the horns are very different. The mule deer has forked horns and no brow tines, which are the horns right above its eyes. Um, white tail has a big white behind and a big white tail. Mule deer have a black, it's almost like it's dipped in oil, their tail. Um, mule deer, if you see them run, they hop. Uh, white tail run. Uh, they're very, um, they're different on how they, they conduct, uh, how they run. Um, also, uh, mule deer tend to be bigger than white tail deer. Um, you don't find a lot of mule deer, um, east of the Missouri River, although there is some, um, a few, I think close to 10 years ago now, probably one more recent that I haven't heard of, but I know mule deer have been shot during deer season around here. So um, it's not uncommon to see mule deer in this area, but it's not it's not something that, that you see every day. Uh, white-tailed deer found throughout the state, usually uh, white-tailed deer are found throughout the United States. They're very, very common. Um, they, they have a three or 21, no, 16 and a half day season in North Dakota, usually in November. Um, you have several different, uh, that's the gun season. You have also a bow season and a crossbow season and a uh, muzzle loader season. Um, we won't get into all those, but the gun season is a 16 and, a half, 16 and a half day season in November. Bow season starts in September, runs through January. I personally, I, am, I like to bow hunt um, more than I like any other um, type of hunting. Um, other big game animals in North Dakota, elk, moose, bighorn, sheep, antelope, and mountain lions. Um, antelope um, have been, the numbers have been down um, so much so that they have canceled the season in recent years, although in the last couple years now they have opened the season back up. Mountain lions um, in western North Dakota, uh, you have a quota. Once that quota is meet, mountain lion season is closed. In eastern North Dakota, if you see a mountain lion, um, it is not part of a quota. Um, I would imagine I've never seen a mountain lion nor a mountain lion track where I've hunted that if I did, I would be very scared. Um, they're not nice animals. Um, elk, moose, and bighorn sheep, uh, you can actually send in for a tag. Um, it's called the big three. Um, and it's a once in a lifetime tag, um, where you can get an elk and a, you can keep sending, but you couldn't say get a moose tag again, or you couldn't get a bighorn sheep tag again. All are, all are once in a lifetime tags. Um, and you can send in for all three at once. Uh, I think it's just the same cost as sending in for a deer tag. Fur bearing animals, coyotes. Number one animal, um, number one fur bearing animal in North Dakota. What the funny part about coyotes is, is 20 years ago when I was growing up, 25 years ago, there was no coyotes around. Um, you just didn't see them um, because there was no pheasants around. Um, starting in really the 19, late 1990s, you saw a lot more coyotes. Coyotes eat a lot of pheasants. Um, it's said they don't eat deer by a lot of people, but to me, I believe that coyotes eat, also eat um, especially sick or young deer that they can catch. I think they're just a animal, a predator of opportunity. Whatever they see, they, can, they eat. 
Um, then other fur-bearing animals, uh, there's a lot. Um, I named a few here, fox, muskrat, mink, weasel, bobcats, beaver, raccoon, skunks, um, and I'm probably missing many. Um, fox, uh, instead of coyotes, when I was growing up, we had a lot of fox around. Um, smaller, brown, different looking than coyotes. Muskrats, uh, yes, there's a season on muskrats. Um, and I don't know what the fur price is now, but muskrats used to be fairly lucrative. It was, um, <clears throat> it was something that uh, people did purposely go after. Um, you also have mink, weasel, bobcats, beaver, skunk, raccoon, etc., etc. Fish. So, perch family. I'm going to go kind of quick because I'm running out of time here. Uh, walleye. Definitely number one game fish species in North Dakota. Uh, if you don't know what a walleye looks like, you def most definitely should look that up. Also in the perch family, you have yellow perch, and yellow perch is the most common perch in North Dakota. I don't think there is another one. They are fished a lot, largely in the winter, very much a product of high water of the 1990s and early 2000s, where sloughs started getting bigger, perch started swimming out of other lakes, um, and were able to expand their population because they were the only fish species in that lake. Pike family. Northern pike can be found in just about everywhere in North Dakota. What's unique about northern pike is they can be in very low oxygen areas. Um, so lakes that are four or five, six feet deep, you'll find northerns, or you can find northerns because of that. Consequently, muskies need a lot of oxygen, so you don't find many muskies um, in North Dakota. They also need that deep water. Sunfish. Uh, bluegills, found in select areas in North Dakota. We have some bluegill lakes in eastern North Dakota, not many, um, but you, you can find them if you do search. Uh, small and largemouth bass, also found usually where bluegills are found. So if you find a lake with bluegills, usually you'll find those too. Um, others, um, you have catfish, sturgeon, ling, carp, trout, salmon, and paddlefish. Salmon, trout, well, salmon especially are only found in Lake Sakakawea and the Missouri River. Catfish, you can, uh, we have one of the best catfishing rivers in the world, Red, the Red River that runs through Fargo. Sturgeon are typically only found in the Missouri River. Ling or burbot are also only found in the Missouri River. I'm sure they leak out somewhere else, but um, that's as far as I know. Carp, you well, know, you find carp everywhere. Um, and then trout, <clears throat> you'll find trout where they've been stocked. So if you have a small lake, um, usually a, like a kid's fishing lake, that's where you're going to find trout. And then paddlefish. Um, found usually only in the Missouri River. All right, guys, um, that's the end of our slideshow. Um, I Please do the worksheet that goes along with our slideshow and um, make sure that you're looking up those pictures if you don't know what they look like. All right, have a good day.